Today we're going to be talking about how to find velocity and position vectors given an acceleration vector. And in this particular problem, we've been given the acceleration function a of t is equal to i plus 2j. And just looking at the i and j components, we know that this is a vector function for acceleration. We've also been given two initial conditions, v of 0 is equal to k. This tells us that the velocity function, when we plug 0 into the velocity function, we get k back. And r of 0 is equal to i, which tells us that when we plug 0 into the position function, which will be denoted by r of t, when we plug 0 into position, we get i back. So basically, this is an initial value problem. What we need to remember is that normally, we start with a position function, which is r of t. So we start with position r of t. And we take its derivative, r prime of t, which is equal to velocity. So the derivative of position is velocity. We take the second derivative, r double prime of t, which is just the derivative of velocity, and we get acceleration. So that's when we're working with derivatives. We go in this direction like this. But here, we've been given acceleration. So we're starting at the bottom with acceleration, and we're actually going to go in the opposite direction like this, taking the integral to find velocity, and then taking the integral again to find position. So we're going to start with a of t here, the acceleration vector, and we're going to take its integral. So we're looking at the integral of i plus 2j, and we're going to take the integral with respect to t. So we say dt here because we have these functions in terms of t, right? a of t, v of t, and r of t. And of course, this integral here is going to give us velocity, so we'll call this v of t. So what we want to do is look at the coefficients on our i, j, and k components. So in front of i here, essentially we have 1, right? 1i. One well, the integral of 1 with respect to t is just t. So here we have v of t is equal to, we're going to get t. But then, as always, when we take an indefinite integral, we need to go ahead and add c to account for the constant of integration. We'll use the variables c, d, and e for each of our components here. So what we're going to get is the coefficient t plus c in front of i. So instead of 1i, when we take the integral of its coefficient 1, that becomes t. Then we add c to account for the constant of integration. Looking at j here, we're going to get the integral of 2 to be 2t. But then we have to add d, another variable, to account for a second constant of integration. And that's going to be the coefficient on j. Now notice here that this acceleration function is really i plus 2j plus 0k. And that the k drops away because the coefficient is 0. Well, if we take the integral there, remember that we can't define the integral of a constant. Because if we had had some value before, like we could have had for the velocity function 4k or 7k, right? And taking the derivatives of both of those would have given us 0k, right? That would have disappeared. So we don't know what the value of the coefficient was. We just need to use a constant to account for whatever that might have been. So we're going to say plus e k, where e is not the exponential function, but just a constant like c and d. So there's an expression for our velocity vector, our velocity function. What we need to do now is use this initial condition we've been given, v of 0 is equal to k, to try to solve for these constants of integration. So what we're going to do is plug 0 in for t and set this equal to k. So we're going to get k is equal to, plugging 0 in for t, we get 0 plus c, or just ci. Plugging 0 in for t here, we get 0 plus d, or just dj. And then ek, there's nowhere to plug in for t there, so we just get ek. Now that we have this, what we can do is equate coefficients on the left and right hand sides. So you can think of the left hand side over here as 0i plus 0j plus k. So equating coefficients, we're going to have 0 and c, so we get 0 is equal to c. We're going to have 0 and d here, so we get 0 equals d. And then we have here 1, right, 1 in front of the k, so 1 and e, so we get 1 is equal to e. So those are the values of c, d, and e. So when we write out our velocity function now, we get v of t is going to be equal to, coming back to this equation here, and plugging in these constants, we got 0 for c right here. So we get t plus 0, or just t, times i. We got 0 for d, so 2t plus 0 is just 2t 
j and we got one for e so just plus one k or plus k so there's our velocity function we took care of this part now we need to go ahead and find position function and of course position is just going to be the integral of velocity because we're coming back and doing this step right here so we're going to say that position which we're going to call r of t is going to be equal to the integral of our velocity function so the integral of ti plus 2tj plus k with respect to t so now taking the integral of these coefficients here, we're going to have to do the same thing we did when we took the integral of the acceleration function. The integral of t is going to be 1 half t squared, but remember we need to add another constant of integration. We'll use x, y, and z this time instead of c, d, and e. So we'll say plus x, and we multiply by i. The integral of 2t is just t squared, so we're going to get t squared plus y, another constant, times j. And then for k here, the integral of 1, you can basically consider this as 1k. The integral of 1 is t, so we're going to get plus t plus z times k. Now we can use our initial condition, r of 0 is equal to i, to solve for these coefficients. So we're going to set this equal to i, and we're going to plug 0 in for t. So when we plug 0 in for t here, we're going to get 0 plus x, or just x times i, so xi. When we plug 0 in for t, we get 0 plus y, or just y times j, so plus y, j. And then plugging 0 in for t right here, we get 0 plus z, or just zk, so plus zk. And now we can equate coefficients just like we did over here. So because essentially we have 1i, right, 1i plus 0j plus 0k over here on the left-hand side, we can say x is equal to 1 y is equal to 0, and z is equal to 0. So now plugging those back in to this equation we found for r of t, we're going to get r of t is equal to 1 half t squared plus 1. So we'll say 1 half t squared plus 1 times i. Here we're going to get t squared plus 0, because we said that y was equal to 0, or just t squared times j, like this. And then we're going to get t plus, we found z to be 0, so just t plus 0, or tk, so plus tk. And that's it. So here we have our position function, and here we have our velocity function. That's how we find the velocity and position vectors given an acceleration vector and initial conditions.